Meet Betul Kazar, synthetic biologist and astrobiologist now at the University of Arizona. What she does is she reconstructs molecules that used to exist on Earth so we can study them and study how they used to function. She's also one of the founders of SaganNet for outreach and young astrobiologists. I sat down with her and we talked about the question, are we alone? My name is Betul Kajar. Okay, and uh, what, what kind, of, are you a scientist? I am a scientist, I am an evolutionary biologist. Uh-huh, and where do you work? I work at Harvard University. Okay, and uh, are we alone in the universe? Are we alone in the universe? Well, an, an, like answering that question um, requires answering um, another question, which is, is life we see around us a result of random process or random processes or a thermodynamically likely configuration of atoms and molecules. In other words, is life random or was life inevitable? I think the probability of our planet's ancient environment that hosted the emergence of life, the hosted the scene for life to emerge, to be a single condition, the universal level, is very unlikely. Now, when you teach students about the question, are we alone, what do you think some of the biggest misconceptions that students have are? Students um, don't think that these questions are relevant to science. Uh, students think that their um, science today is not positioned in a, uh, in a way to answer these questions, that these are simply uh, relevant for ph philosophers or social science perhaps and just um, or historians or perhaps even um, Egyptian uh, ancient Egyptian philosophers. Egypt Egyptologists? Egyptologists. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> right, now you do research and how what is the most relevant part of your research towards towards answering the question are we alone? I am interested in understanding the biology of the past. We when we think of life, uh, when we define life, we are thinking about life we see today, and that's normal because that's life we see today. And we base our assumptions of life's existence and how it looks like based on what we see today on our planet. We often forget that life and evolution itself is an ever-evolving and changing process, and it's an extremely historical science. It is fundamentally historical. And our Earth's past is also alien. Say, the fact that it's historical, does that mean that it's irrepeatable, that we shouldn't expect it, the same type of things to evolve elsewhere? Uh, That's what history usually is sometimes referred to as one damn thing after another, as if it's not deterministic, as opposed to physics and chemistry, which is deterministic and hard science. Well, so some would argue that history only repeats itself. So. Uh, this also is debatable, right? Just because a concept is historical doesn't make it one directional. Okay, do you have any uh, advice for young people, students who are thinking about becoming astrobiologists? Uh, well, we uh, have a, um, I have two, two degrees of advices. One is that they, I encourage that they follow the updates on the NASA Astrobiology website, and we have a, a, an astrobiology outreach uh, website that we form. Uh, named SaganNet after Carl Sagan, uh, where they can re reach out to uh, a lot of astrobiologists who study this, these questions from different angles. But most importantly, I think uh, what my advice to anyone who is interested in understanding life at the fundamental level is to not be discouraged by um, the lack of maybe scientists who are also interested in these questions around them. And it's it's not a it's a it's a kind of a lonely it can be a lonely field sometimes if you don't feel it like that here because we are in an astrobiology meeting and everyone shares this passion with us and it's great but when we go back to our departments we can be the only person who is interested in these questions and may feel a bit alone alone <laughs> <laughs> so I and I think for someone who is at the college level or in grad school level in postdoc level who is interested in these things. That's a very big obstacle because we want to fit in too at the same time. So don't be afraid to be the wild child. It's okay. We have <laughs> <laughs> All right.